Hello and welcome to this AV equipment special. I picked up a couple of uh, pieces of AV equipment that were thrown out and I just wanted to share them with you today. Maybe you've seen these before. Um, so we have here an iMerge. Uh, this is a Sound Server S3000 and also we have a DVD receiver which is a Rotel and it's an RSDX-02E. I think the sound server is the most interesting piece of kit here. Basically it contains a hard drive to store your music and then uh, you can play it from the web or just from these front controls connected to your sound system which I'll show you the control uh, connections in a moment. Uh, and it's a nice little bit of kit. We're going to see inside of these later as well. Uh, but this uh, was from around about I think, I think 2006 or 2008 weighs about eight kilograms as well so quite heavy in, indeed but I've tested it and it appears to be working it's already got music they left on there and so basically the music's displayed on the screen here uh, these are various different options and you've got all your standard play pause and everything else uh, and it displays the albums and so on um, if I just show you under it's written down here. Uh, you'll notice it's got another model number here, S3004-160. Basically this means it can output to four different rooms and it has a 160 gigabyte hard drive. So it's a, a slightly different model they do uh, for different uh, versions. So if you have a look at the back here, this looks very nice. It's basically a computer really. Um, obviously UK version, so um, 230 no 100 to 240 volts that's quite wide range actually again the model number here so we've got our four different outputs so this is like in a club or whatever you could output sound to different um, uh, rooms you even have a line in as well uh, digital in and out and this also connects to a monitor because you can play images at the same time as the music I couldn't get the VGA working but it's certainly outputted through the um, composite uh, connection you can even connect this to a modem or your network for controlling remotely it's got I think you can connect flash drives or something to that and it's also got a controller an IR receiver I don't really know too much about that um, but yeah very nice bit of kit and it'd be very interesting to see what's inside this it's basically going to be some kind of uh, computer really uh, the DVD receiver, so it's called a receiver because it plays DVDs and you can connect, uh, it's an amp as well, and you can connect um, a radio antenna to it to listen to uh, AM or FM stations. Um, nice volume control, nice vacuum, vacuum fluorescent display and you've got all your standard uh, controls. Again I tested this to play DVDs and CDs fine. Uh, and if we just look at the back, I'll just rotate this. Look, very fancy connections here. So we've got all our different channels, um, I think, for connecting to a 3D setup. Um, note, this is not earthed, which is a bit worrying. It's only got the live and neutral connections. And here is very interesting. You'll see, as this is the Model 02E, it's designed, I believe, for Europe because it's got the SCART sockets that they don't have in other countries. There's a version that instead of the SCART sockets, they have component connections. So you can basically connect your satellite box or VCR. Again, it's from around 2008, um, and this weighs about almost 10 kilograms as well uh, and there's also connections to go to your TV so a nice bit of kit um, uh, yeah uh, we'll have a look inside shortly that's it okay so we're going to take apart the um, iMerge um, sound server S3000 as you say it's probably some kind of computer actually I've got a good idea from looking online it perhaps runs Linux um, but obviously this is better than a PC in theory because it should not crash <laughs> in theory um, obviously whenever you're working on electronics especially if you used them recently be very careful because the capacitors can still keep a charge which can be lethal so always be very careful so I'm going to remove the top uh, cover it's just got a few screws um, on the side so say I don't know what to expect other than it's going to be some kind of um, computer um, yeah so it's just some standard uh, Phillips screws There's nothing interesting but once we get the um, oh I've just noticed some extra screws at the back which is why it's um, 
always typical, but uh, yeah. So let's just get these screws off. Uh, I have found manuals for both pieces of equipment, which I'll link in the video description. Although one of them was for the non-European version of the um, DVD receiver. Screws at the back. It's always interesting to see inside uh, manufacturing equipment uh, because you don't know how they've done what they've done you know have they done it nice and tidy nice and secure have they been a bit lazy is it like an old version or something uh note the security seal i'm not gonna get my warranty anymore what a shame um a lot of screws here annoyingly um hopefully it's modular so they've used the circuit board for the connectors uh, for the main circuit board um hopefully and then the good thing about modular is you can reuse or fix the parts a lot easier um i did look on ebay and there was one of these was going for about 200 pounds but uh they do seem to sell them non-working as well which is not surprising but if you can fix it then obviously it's well worth it this brake security still oh and a mr screw that was good let's just get this out Hopefully it's the last one. Worst thing when you find out there's some more screws somewhere. So let's hope. Yeah, that's nice and easy. Oh, quite minimal actually. Quite minimal. Well, this, oh, this is very interesting actually. You've got a standard, standard PC um, CD drive. Yeah, because um, those are the sounds of it. You can rip and play audio from a CD. So if you look here, it's standard IDE um, PATA connection, so and you've got your Molex power connector. Interestingly, no audio connection there, so must be getting it through the um, IDE connection. Kind of a system fan there. Yeah, oh look, power supply, that's nice and modular. So if you got this for free and maybe a part of it didn't work, you could just use the power supply. Hopefully it's labelled, maybe not, but you could probably work it out. It's probably standard 12 volts and 5 volts, but yeah, very nice indeed. And here you've got hard drive again, which is uh, IDE. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but uh, and Molex. But so it's very standard PC parts. We're expecting this to be oh, 164 gigabytes. That's quite unusual, I think. But um, it says it's 160, obviously with formatting. Um, here we have a nice processing board uh, for your audio connection so I don't know if that is well, it's made by iMush but we could I can perhaps look at that processor and find out some information and link that in um, here we have well that is interesting some kind of network card maybe again after I have a look online uh, and then you've got your main board there that's probably the main system on chip the CPU oh this is now this is interesting there is down here a RAM slot. So it's basically a PC motherboard as we guessed it would be some kind of computer. And it looks like you could actually put some RAM in them, up upgrade it, but whether it detects it, I don't know. And then there's a coin cell probably for the it's got some kind of BIOS or some sort. Uh, there might be a flash chip around somewhere. And we've got some heat sinks here, so there must be some chips underneath that do a lot of processing work. So maybe the main system chip is actually underneath there. Um, and all that's left really is this front board here, which it has an LCD, so it might be a standard uh, HD44780, but I will look into that and report that back. But yes, very modular, very nice, and you could reuse some of these parts. I believe this has got like a Linux partition on it, so if anyone's managed to hack this, it'd be really good and use it as like a normal PC even, but um, yeah, uh, that's a nice... Um, Nice bit of very modern pieces. Um, uh, yeah, that's it for now. So now we are having, we're going to take apart the Rotel OS DX-02E. Um, it does look like it's already been <laughs> undone or uh, and there's some damage to the bus in the front you might have seen in the first video but let's take this apart as always there's some screws on the side so we need to start with them really um, yeah uh, so this is a DVD receiver so we're not expecting to see a computer inside it but certainly wouldn't complain 
Um, from looking inside the grills, it looks like there might be quite a beefy power supply, that's for sure. Um, so it's a DVD receiver, so it plays DVD, CDs, connect your radio, and a general purpose amplifier. So a lot, it's a very large and heavy piece of equipment, but you know, that's in a, your own little home theatre or something, uh, it could be very useful. Um, again, we've got some screws at the back. Uh, this is very interesting because it's not earthed, um, which is very worrying, as this is a metal case, but I'm sure there's a reason for that. Uh, this will be the last screw, hopefully. It will just come off like with the other piece of equipment. Yes. Ah, well, this is what I've seen. Look at this huge huge transformer that's very nice and there's just a little power circuit underneath i don't know how they've got away with not earthing this but maybe someone can shed the light on that but that transformer is very beefy um so this is the main power supply part that's where i think the transformer mainly goes to there and this other board here we expect it to be some kind of switching mode power supply uh, you've got a Unlike in the uh, server that had a standard PC uh, drive, this has got one of those standard DVD drives as you would expect really. So that's um, there. They're quite difficult to remove, but uh, and as for finding a replacement, I'm not sure. Uh, then we've got a couple, quite a few boards here. Um, I wonder if I can see. Looks like there's some power supply circuitry here as well. Um, tuner and there's you won't better really see this because we need to get these balls off the oh, they can be unscrewed um, we might have to do a separate video but basically we've got some the scarp balls you might just better see through there so as I said in the other probably American version they don't use scarp they have component instead so they've probably gone for a modular uh, replacement so they can just you know stick that in and that's all good here we have so this is the front ball so you've got a vacuum it looks like a vacuum fluorescent display ball so there's some kind of microprocessor i have to look and see and find any information about those chips um well that chip anyway that might be some kind of general purpose microcontroller or it may uh, be a special driver chip for that display that's the main looks like main power supply ball there's another transformer there i wonder if we can get any of these boards off I just unscrew like so but they might not come off easily but let's quickly try um, again always be very careful not just from electric shock or store charge but also that you don't cut yourself because these parts are very sharp yep oh this looks good it's coming yes I think it's coming away there's a piece of plastic here uh, it's annoying when things don't just come undone. This seems to be a kind of riser board there. Uh, <laughs> that's annoying when things just don't come out. Uh, that comes out. I have, ooh, I have no idea what that is. I have to look up those chips um, later. Could be some kind of processing. Uh, M N35505, but we'll look at that. Well, I'll have a look later and see if I can look at. Ah, I see why this is not coming out. Hopefully it's not actually soldered in. Uh, it does not want to come out. I think it may be soldered in, which is a real pain. Uh, let's see if we can get this front one out. So, this has got these really nice connectors on uh, by the way they just unscrew when you put the um, wires through uh, I'm never really sure how good those connectors are really but because I like the phono connectors you just plug them in and, and that's it really um, I wonder if that's just gonna I if that's gonna easily come out which is an ah that's actually fitted to there so if I it's not screw it down, let's just... No. Hmm. If it goes to plan, does it? That's made it worse. Yeah, not so easy to remove, like... Uh, oh, and there's more. Oh, great. I 
can't people stick to screws? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be quite a bit of work. I may have to come back uh, to that. So I've managed to uh, get apart basically the rest of it. So this is the board was um, upside down. Um, they look like possibly relays for switching out different outputs. We've got these huge capacitors here which might be uh, part of the power supply, some kind of smoothing. Uh, you'll notice that they've connected to different balls using this kind of arrangement which is okay but a little tricky um, to undo. Um, if you can see here there's some big uh, either, well they've got a lot of connection power chips um, maybe a collection of transistors or something That's, so this does suggest this board is still part of the power supply or part of the main amplifier actually probably and you've got some heat sinks here so that conducts the heat into the main well a huge piece of metal anyway and the, the fan nearby as well so that makes sense uh, a board here I took out on haven't really had a look at it but uh, I can try and find out hopefully what some of the chips are for in that connector as well. We've got the SCART connectors here and there's another SCART there, there's a tuner there as well. Um, oh yeah, that's for the uh, radio I believe. Something I've noticed which is very good, if you look at these connectors here, they are all labelled. So you've got like DAC, uh, S-mute, DAC, 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 so was it digital analog converter? Um, that resistor there looks a bit bodged, but um, that's that's so helpful when they label the connections. You got like f uh, floats, ground float. That's very helpful. You could work out what uh, some of these things do, so that is very handy. And for, uh, you, just alone, you could reuse those connectors. Curiously. In this panel here, you see it's a voltage selector, but there is no voltage selector yet. There's this connector here for some reason. I don't know what looks like an audio connector, but I don't think that would normally be accessible, so that is very interesting. Um, and that is basically it. Uh, you can just have a bit of well, it's not very interesting down here, but uh, it's just got a lot of uh, transistors, so uh, that's about it for now.